In order to fully understand a topic, it's important to look beneath the surface. But is it actually possible to apply this often used metaphor to the realities of the cosmos? Even if scientists have yet to decode the nature and exact form of the universe, it's frequently called an infinite construct. Therefore, the question arises, can something like a galactic edge exist where infinity prevails? What experts have to say concerning this exciting topic and which complications the experts confront will show you in today's video. Video. Want to learn more about the exciting spectacles in space on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to join us from now on on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the cosmos. Show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. A limited view. Our earthly view of the stars is not suitable for understanding the universe as a total construct, a fact that becomes clear if we keep in mind that we can truly explore only a vanishingly small part of the cosmos directly. That area is defined in cosmology as the observable universe. This model is based on the assumption that the cosmos is isotropic and homogeneous. This means that the universe also presents itself to the observer in the same way, independent of his location and direction of observation. Within the model of the observable universe, our Earth forms the center of a sphere. The sphere surrounding our blue home planet corresponds to that region of the universe which we can see from our point of view. Taking into account the constant expansion of space, the distance to the observation horizon is estimated to be 46.6 billion light years. In fact, it's necessary to take into account that the distance covered by light in the course of millions of years has been subsequently extended of the unrestrained expansion of the universe. It's obvious that our earthly view into space is subject to some natural restrictions which make it impossible for us to understand the cosmos as a whole, for we simply do not know what is hiding beyond the observable universe. So where the direct research gaze is subject to blinders, experts must use other means to get as close as possible to the true manifestations of the universe. The most promising research tool of experts is therefore mathematics. Basic Types of Universe Before we turn to the question of how it's possible to define the edge of an infinite universe, we should first take a look at the three different basic types of the cosmos described in Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. The only type which is not infinite is a universe which essentially curves into itself. From a mathematical point of view, the cosmos in this case would have a positive curvature. If we travel in such a universe long enough, in a certain direction, we would come back to our starting point eventually. In such a universe, however, the terrestrial laws of geometry are to some extent reduced to absurdity. For example, in such a case, two parallel lines will eventually converge and cross each other. Within general relativity, a universe with this geometry is called the sitter space. Things are different again in the scenario of a flat cosmos. Here, two orbits running parallel to each other will never change their distance to each other, let alone touch. Last but not least, there is the case in which the universe has a negative curvature. The corresponding models draw the cosmos here as a saddle-shaped construct. This geometrical model is called the anti de Sitter space which the example of the parallel lines makes clear. Instead of the corresponding orbits crossing each other at some point, they diverge in a cosmos with negative curvature. This means that they diverge into infinity. In accordance with our topic today, we leave the model of a finite cosmos to the side for now and direct our attention to the two variants which describe an infinite universe and our initial question, how is it possible to limit infinity? The Penrose Diagram this is a very exciting research question, which has occupied the scientific community for many decades. As early as the beginning of the 1960s, physicists were trying to find ways to map infinite space-time, namely, all the way to the edge of an infinite universe or across the event horizon of a black hole. For in fact, our usual space and time coordinates no longer apply there, they go to infinity. Finally, the researchers succeeded in working out mathematical models within which space and time merge into new coordinates that suppress infinity. This process is called compression within the expert world. While the first theory still aimed at crossing the event horizon of black holes, it was finally the Briton, Roger Penrose, who transferred these efforts 
to the idea of an infinitely larger universe. Thus, the mathematician and theoretical physicist developed in the 60s his much lauded Penrose coordinates and Penrose diagrams. With the help of this, it was possible to represent the global structure of space-time graphically. On the corresponding diagram, space is entered horizontally and the time vertically. A light cone, in turn, shows the causal relationship between different events of space-time. Here, the metric is compacted by a conformal transformation. In simple terms, this means a conformal mapping, whereby the infinite time as well as an infinite space coordinate is represented as a two-dimensional finite subspace. This particular conformal compression ensures that the path of any light ray is at an angle of exactly 45 degrees across the diagram. Conversely, this means that only the speed of light is capable of reaching the specified limits. Everything that moves below the speed of light, or in other words, everything that has a mass, is literally carried away way by the contours of space. Thereby, the Penrose diagram also opens up a conceivably exciting possibility. We can follow a quantum field up to infinite distances and calculate its behavior there. The most famous application of this method among experts was carried out by none other than Stephen Hawking. The British theoretical physicist connected a quantum field between two points at infinite distance, or in other words, both in the past and in the future, whereby he finally succeeded in defining the state of the quantum vacuum in resolvable flat space. Hawking then placed a black hole between these points and calculated how it affected the equilibrium of the quantum field. In the process, Hawking ultimately concluded that two areas in the universe that are infinitely far apart cannot be in a perfect vacuum if a black hole lies between them. This insight led the renowned expert to the thesis that the black hole must generate particles, the so-called Hawking radiation. The Limits of Infinity Penrose diagrams define the infinite limit of the universe as a useful mathematical tool for complex calculations, taking into account the holographic principle, which states that for every description of the dynamics of a space-time region, there exists an equivalent description localized only on the edge of the corresponding region. We again need the infinite limit of a negatively curved cosmos, exactly as in the Penrose diagram, a conformal transformation is to be carried out here. All inner angles are thus preserved, with the layers becoming denser towards the edge. Within this diagram, however, we do not map space and time, but two dimensions of hyperbolic space. To complete the conformal compactification of hyperbolic space, it's worth looking at Escher's circle limit graphs. The building blocks here, represented by angles and devils, repeat themselves, getting smaller and smaller towards the edge of the circular limit. Transferred to the definition of the boundary of an infinite universe, the basic construction thus still appears quite simple. One begins with a circle, which one fills with a row of circle segments, which intersect the circumference of the circle at right angles. Accordingly, these circle segments represent the straight lines within a hyperbolic geometry. The hyperbolic behavior of these arcs corresponds to that of geodesics, the locally shortest connecting curves of two points. Ultimately, this is a conformal transformation of a hyperbolic surface, since the intersection angles of the corresponding lines are preserved. At the same time, an infinite hyperbolic surface fits onto a finite disk in this way, with the lengths towards the edge being represented by shorter and shorter arcs. Another possibility of a conformal mapping, where the shapes are even locally preserved, is the so-called tessellation. In simplified terms, this refers to tiling a space with regularly recurring polygons. This is illustrated by an example in which we fill the circle with a regular selection of segments. The enclosed segments differ from each other in terms of their sizes, but always retain the same shapes. In theory, there are practically infinite possibilities for tessellating hyperbolic space with regular geometric shapes. Consequently, this diagram can represent an infinite anti de Sitter universe with two spatial dimensions at the same time. Each tile embodies a region of space of the same size. The boundary is again infinitely far away and presents itself always the same, independently of our point of view and our direction of observation. Now we want your opinion. What do you think about today's admittedly a bit more complex video? Write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to our contribution below in the comments. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.